26th of October 2013. Welcome to our, our weekly get together, boys and girls. It's Chris Reardon, today's United Kingdom talk. And we're, uh, well, lots of news stories about the weather coming up. Yes, we are in grave danger here in the United Kingdom. Yes, it's all been on the news and everywhere. In the Daily Mail yesterday, I don't get up too early on a Saturday to get the papers. That's why you always get yesterday's news, you see. Because <laughs> I haven't got up early enough. Oh, Marge says she enjoys the warm-up music. It is actually the same music uh, every week, Marge, but I'm glad to enjoy our, our half an hour of warm-up music. Do you, ever, do you ever switch on before 11.30, Marge? Because you'll, you'll hear the, um, the test tone at that time. Where is it? Here it is. Was that, sorry, was that, was that a bit loud? Was that a little bit loud? Sorry, Marge. Yes, um, uh, Marge is enjoying the music. Strongest storms since 1987 to batter the UK. Now, people like Shania, I'm not sure about Terry who's with us this morning. Certainly Shania on the Isle of Wight wasn't here in 1987, were you, my darling? I was, and so was your dad. We had the worst ever storms. I don't know what it was like on the Isle of Wight, but I always remember, and I slept through it all. I went to bed that night, okay? Woke up in the morning, looked out the window. There were trees down all over the place. At the time, I worked for British Telecom, and um, oh, we got ever so much overtime out of that. It went on for weeks. Millions of pounds I earned in the space of just a week. It was unbelievable. We got so much overtime. We had Saturdays. We had Sundays. We had extended days. Um, and the trouble is, people would ring up and say, oh, my phone's not working, you know, after the storm. And we'd take down the details. And the thing, what was that? Oh, where's my mobile phone? Let me turn that off. Sorry, I'll just turn this off. There we are. Um, uh, we um, were, were told to make the wire safe. Because what, what had happened, certainly from the telephone point of view, is that uh, telegraph poles had been blown over. I mean, it really was that bad, Shania. It was like a war zone throughout the area I covered. Uh, the area I covered fixing the telephones was Richmond, Ham, Mortlake and Kew, which is re and Barnes, really nice areas, quite affluent. Right, And people would ring up thinking that us engineers were going around to fix their phones, which we would do if it was a quick job. But our main priority was making things safe. So often you'd go to this to, to perhaps one house, you know, they'd made the phone call. You'd get there and there'd be a telegraph pole on the on, across the road. You know, or on the pavement or, or down somehow with all these wires dangling from it. And we literally, all we could do is go around and cut all the wires off. So you just cut the wires off. And they thought they were going to get their phone fixed. Well, it wasn't enough time for that. We had to make everything safe. So we'd go around from house to house. And then, of course, you know, if one person had booked you to come out and there's a telegraph pole down, you could have, I don't know, you could have a dozen wires coming from this telegraph pole to other houses and you'd have to cut them all even if they were working I mean, obviously we couldn't lift the telegraph pole uh, another uh, another team had to come down there you know with a machine to pick it up and kind of take it away but uh, it was oh it was terrible people had their roofs blown off well this could happen again tomorrow if we're anything by the um, Daily Mail or indeed the BBC News BBC News have been saying this for the last couple of days as well now, we did see it earlier on in the week in the Daily Express. We don't really take much interest of the weather forecast in the Daily Express. Because when whenever, they, whenever they do the weather, they, do, they always do these front page weather things on the, on the Daily Express. Have you noticed? And it's always going to be like an, a total disaster. So I don't really take much interest. But all the other papers are saying it now. And uh, it says in the Daily Mail, the strongest storm to threaten the UK since 1987 is on its way, forecasters warned last night. They predicted hurricane strength winds and widespread damage to trees and houses. Coastal regions in the southwest will be first to hit from midnight on Sunday before the storm moves inland. More than an inch of rain in 12 hours. So, 
I think, uh, in the south. And, of course, uh, the Isle of Wight is in the south, isn't it? I often wonder, you know, when you're on a little island, like the Isle of Wight, and you're quite high up, aren't you? Do you I, I, I would assume that the wind is stronger there because you've got nothing in the way. I want you... Oh, I'm going to sneeze. I can feel myself wanting to sneeze. No, it's not happening. No, not happening. But you know what I mean? If If you're sort of, like... Where I am here, I'm surrounded by lots of trees, lots more land and buildings, further afield. Whereas when you're on a little island, if that wind's coming straight across the sea, surely you must get it worse, do you? On the Isle of Wight. People should take more care when making journeys, particularly if they are driving high-sided vehicles, it says in the Daily Mail. There could be also disruptions to transport services and delays on the road. The storm is currently 5,000 miles away over the Gulf of Mexico, and its route may change as it nears Britain. So it could go the other way, you know, it could, go, could suddenly turn and go in another direction. A little bit like my best mate on the motorway, dear. Oh, God. Oh, he was doing it again the other day. Now, where were we going? Um, we were in the car. That's it. Well, I was going, we was in the car going down to uh, one of the places that I used to work out because some idiot has rewired the sound equipment in there and there was no bass. Not only was there no bass, but the jukebox, they couldn't turn it off. They pulled down the fader on this mixer and it would still be on. So I went down there to sort out some idiot had wired it up completely wrongly. I don't know how. I mean, when I left there four weeks ago, it was all right, so someone's obviously fiddled with the wires, got it all round the wrong way. Idiots. Of course, he drives... And he's in the fast lane. He's in the overtaking lane all the time. And it gets gets to the junction, you know, and so he's across all three lanes and off. Oh, I just hate his driving. I don't know why I get into a car with him, to be honest. So there we are. You know, you need to... Uh, tie down things, certainly in my garden. When I finish the show today, I'm going to go in my garden and pick up pots. And you see, the wind can whip one of those up and straight through your blooming window, dear. I mean, I'm worried about the cat going out to the toilet. I might have to go out and get a cat tray earlier, just so that she doesn't have to go out in the wind. She could go out there and be having a little wee somewhere in the garden, and suddenly the wind would pick her up and blow her in all directions, dear. It's not funny. Don't sit there laughing. This is my pussy we're talking about. She must be safe. Either that or I could, I suppose I could strap a few weights to her back. But then what if the wind's really strong and it might pick up her and the weights and throw it through one of my windows? Double glaze. That's, that's two window panes to buy. Thank you very much. Talking of windows, I'm having my new windows put in in, in a couple of weeks. Yes, I haven't got the date yet. I'm going to ring them after. I didn't, I didn't, there's so much to do after I've done the show today. Um, I'm not having windows replaced. In the side of the house, I think I told you this, um, I have no windows. I'm at the end of the terrace. I guess it's just a brick wall. And the hall area, as always, I thought being a bit dark, you know, because there's no light coming through. So I'm having a windows put in, uh, an extra one in my bedroom, and an extra one on, in the hall, um, where there are no windows at the moment. And uh, that let a lot more light in. I do like light, don't you? We don't like too much darkness and unhappiness. Like it is at Halloween. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I've got echo. Halloween. Ooh, is that word? Hall Halloween. Halloween. Ooh. <coughs> and I've got, <coughs> I've got something to ask you, actually. <coughs> Halloween. Oh, I printed this song. <coughs> Where is it? Oh, yes. Uh, no, that's not it. Where's the, oh, where's my print off of the Halloween thing? Or oh, maybe I didn't print it off, did I? No, I didn't. Need help. Need help, everyone. Okay. Oh, let me just do these messages. Marge says, thank you. That helps my sinuses, that test tone. What, this one? I've got two different ones. I've got that. And I've got that. Which one do you prefer, the, the, the low one, the low one, or the high one? Which one do you prefer, Marge? How can that clear your sinuses, a test tone? <laughs> Shania says, I'm getting quite scared about the storm. I'm making sure I go to bed very early to try and sleep through it. Yeah, and get under all the covers, Shania. 
Because if any glass f comes in or anything like that, you want to be under those covers, my darling. They're all under duvet. You e extra duvet. Have you got an extra duvet anywhere? Get under two duvets, Shania. And then you'll be nice and safe from the wind. You might have to sleep downstairs on the sofa. Because you if you lose the roof, you know, you'll wake up and you'll be able to see the stars. <laughs> Do be careful, dear, in those winds. Um, Terry says, The storm is very scary. No, my ears, no need for the test tone. Also, have I hurt your ears? Well, it's helping Marge's sinuses. I might do a whole programme of just test tone. What do you think? Will that kind of be a ratings puller? Because we need to do something. <laughs> less and less people are watching this show as the weeks go by. I'm sure they are. I think it's the length of it, actually. People don't like it too long. I do actually get statistics on how many people have watched and listened. Do you want to know what they are, Terry? Eh? Apparently the storm, Terry says it might miss Yorkshire. Oh, I hope so. Well, we're going to get it down here this time in the south. Right, hang on a minute. Oh, she said, Marge says the high-pitched one sounds to work, sounds work to stop pain. It also helps my headache. It's gone now. What, just those few seconds of the test tone? How strange is that? Right now, what was I just saying? Oh, I've got, I've, I've gone off, I've gone off the, um, I've lost the plot now. One minute. Talking to Terry. Terry, what was I going to do then? Going to look up something then for a minute. I can't remember what I was going to do now. So many subjects going round in my head all the time. Terry, what did I say I was going to do? <coughs> Can you remember? And Shania says, get the storm out of my way and I can look forward to my birthday. How old are you going to be? Is it 15 or 16? I can't remember now. When is your birthday, Shania? We must sing happy birthday. Because it's my mate's birthday. Yeah, well, not my mate. My, my mate's, my best mate's boyfriend's birthday last night. He was 25. And he came down to the pub and uh, we bought him a birthday cake. Well, I didn't buy him a birthday cake. Uh, Ronnie bought him a birthday cake, which was quite nice. We got that from Waitrose. There's a story there in a minute. Uh, Terry, just a minute, we'll come back to that. St oh, yeah, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Statistics. Here, yeah, we'll, we'll get these statistics. Hang on a minute. Uh, okay. Okay, no point in me lying about things. I can tell you. So, last week, these are the person that watched, these are the people that watched the recorded show on YouTube, okay? So not the people that watched us live. These are the, the numbers that watched the um, uh, uh, recorded uh, show on YouTube. And people were in a lot of places. I mean, it's sound, you, you, can, you can polish it up to, pre to pretend, you know, and make it sound better than it really is, okay? By that. If I told you I had uh, people watching in the UK, the United States, Spain, Poland, Slovakia and France, OK, that's what it says on my statistics. And I could just leave it there. As indeed would do, you know, large TV companies or or radio stations. That's what we Yeah, We've got listeners all over the world in the UK, in the States, Spain, Poland and Slovakia and France. People all over the world are watching. And I could just leave it there. But you know me, honest Chris. OK, so how many people were watching in these countries? Right, well, we had, according to the YouTube statistics, this is last week's recorded show, which has been up a week, 26 in the UK, 8 in the US, 4 in Spain, 1 in Poland, 1 in Slovakia, and one in France. Doesn't sound so good now, does it? You thought there'd be hundreds, didn't you? <laughs> I couldn't care less. I really couldn't care less. I haven't got any advertisers paying my blooming wages. Why should I worry about it? If you think that's bad enough, it gets worse. Are you ready for this? So, estimated minutes watched. Okay? Now, this isn't an average. Average estimated uh, view, uh, minutes watched, right? In the UK, 
Those 26 people, as an average, watched about 17 minutes of the show. In the US, slightly better. The average view of eight viewers was 21 minutes and 25 seconds. In Spain, four people watched a show an average of 13 minutes and 57 seconds. So, I mean, we've been on the air now 17 minutes, so most people have now gone. <laughs> okay? In Poland, there was one person watching for six minutes. In Slovakia, there was one person watching for 13 minutes. I mean, it is just going up and up. In France, there was one person watching for two seconds. So there's the honesty of me. I cannot lie to you, boys and girls. There aren't millions of people watching the entire show. So <clears throat> I got to thinking about this. And we sit here, just a few of us, on the live show. I can tell you the live statistics as well, as well, uh, via YouTube. Now, the people that watch, this is just the, what, the people that watch. Don't forget, there are people that are li only listen that is actually much better now let me let me go let me get that for you i can't split that up into countries and i don't know um how long people listen for so these are the people that downloaded the audio version of the show all right um to listen to since last week oh we got a phone call hello who's on the phone it's me. Who's me? I'm just just watching you whinge on Saturday the 26th of October. Oh, that's, um... Oh, I know that voice. Who's that? <laughs> Airbags. Hello, Mr. Airbags. It's Lung Troll. Hey, hello, Chris. Lung Troll. Well, we just we just got to the, just got to the listeners. The list people that just listen to the show. There's far more. Um, since last last Saturday, 98 people have downloaded the, the, the audio version of the show. People think there's like thousands of people watching. Yeah, but uh, you see, you want my take on it? Yes. It's nothing to do with figures. Go on. You are there for when you feel a bit low. And you want to have a good laugh. Yes. You're always there. Oh, yes, yes. Like the BBC, switch on and you and I can make a chance. Hey, you're better than the BBC, mate. Do you think so? I definitely think so. Well, Why do you think I've been a fan all these years? At least you don't have to pay any, um, any blooming uh, licence fee to me. <laughs> no, but I just wanted to clear that up. There's so many people, and I do hate it when people hype things up, and you know damn well they're talking a load of bullshit. Yeah. So I'd yeah. rather come out and just say, "Our it is," and that's the end of it. Look at the X Factor. I mean, for God's sake, I don't watch it. Do you watch it? I don't watch anything like that. No, no, it's just awful. Fake, fake, fake. It's brain dead stuff. Yeah, it is. That's why my wife is brain dead. Is she? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, she's more breathless than me now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm life serious, with, she's that's really life bad. With my, my old Fred Lung Troll, how's it going, all right? Hey, oh, you know what I mean, I'll go down and then i come back. Yes, I know. You know what I mean, I'm only here to look after her now. Oh, yeah? Oh. Yeah, the, the roles have reversed. She looked after me for all them years, and now I'll have to look after her. <laughs> yeah, you've got better, haven't you? Hey, You have actually got better, haven't you? Um, well, a very quick story. Yeah. Two Christmases ago, yeah. she was taken in to hospital, and the outcome looked very bleak. Right. The government stopped my benefits, so I stopped taking all my medication. Right. And I tried to hang myself. But the, the real story is, the one tablet that I've been on for a lot of years, I stopped taking altogether. I lost all the weight. I went back down to um, about 12 stone. 
and my breathing improved slightly. So that's all there is to it. So, so you shouldn't really have been taking that one, we reckon. Well, I don't know. It was um, it was a tablet to curb my temper. <laughs> right. Because I'm a very aggressive person, you right. know. You don't sound very aggressive to me, my friend. Oh, I'm not. I'm not now. I'm pussycat now. Too old to do that. Right, yeah. yeah. Two seconds, I'm on the ground if I fight. Have you slowed down a bit, have you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. must admit, I've noticed that. I, I've slowed down an awful lot. Even when it comes to, like, just walking around the house I, or, or, or driving, I, I've just slowed down an awful amount. Well, I'll tell people, you like, what, um, time, I do. have noticed you've been up and down like a yo-yo over the last couple of years. All oh, right. Have you got an illness? Uh, a little one, yes. I thought so. Yes. I'm not prying. I don't want to know. Yes. You know, because um, I, I tend to get a bit privacy when that comes up sometimes, but, you know. But I tell you what, forget your figures. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that thoroughly enjoy what you Oh, no, 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 no. I don't worry about them, but to, to people sometimes say, how many? So there you are. There, there's, there's the answer. Much more well, people just listen, and you can understand that, because I, I download a load of podcasts, uh, LBC ones, actually, for the, car, for the car. Yeah. And you can't watch something in the car, so it's much easier to just listen anyway. Well, i tell you what, I, was, I got my new car the other day. Yes. And um, I was talking to the young man who sold it to me. Yes. And I was actually talking to you, talking about you, and also... Related the story about Jennifer Holiday. Which one was? Uh, oh yes, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I understand. You remember what you're that? Saying. I understand what you're saying. When you sent me an email and said you've had me in tears all the morning. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Well, I actually um, put some on a CD for him, and and I spoke to him a couple of days later, and he said, "My God," he said, "the hair stood up on the back of my head." Right. Listening to Jennifer Holiday. Which song was it? And I'm telling you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I I got a CD the other day yeah. or the other week. Came all the way from the states. Right. The best of. Okay. What else is on there? Is there anything else we'd know that was on there? Eh? Is oh there... yeah, there's um, I Am Love. Yeah. Um. 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 Uh, I'm changing. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. I'm changing. Love that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'll have to look. You know what it's like. You know, I know your memory's going a bit because I've seen you stop dead when you're talking. Oh, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, I think half the trouble is um, that I go off on, on some... If I stuck to what I was talking about, like, you know, we were on Storms a minute ago. We've gone completely in another direction now. If I just stuck to the thing I was talking about, I'd probably remember what the hell I was going on about. <laughs> you know, you used to do that, didn't you, for the TV? Yeah. Ronnie Corbett. Do you remember his yes. monologues? Yes, of course. Of course. Yes, so yes. don't feel when bad he was, about it, mate. You were in good when company. He was, when he was sitting in the chair. Yes, it. I yes. used to love that. Here, you know what's coming back for a Christmas special this year, don't you? What's that? Open all hours. No. Yep, but it, of course it won't. Of course it won't be Ronnie Barker. David, it, it'll be years later where yeah. David Jason has grown up and is now running the store. Uh, really looking forward to that. Because you know, I buy all the series now. You bought it, have you? Well, I buy a lot. Right. Oh yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And I just sit here and I watch. I do. Them. Look what I've got here. Hang on a minute. Where is it now? This just come a couple of days ago. I oh, don't know. No, no, it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the best of Dick, Dick Emery. <laughs> I've bought the best of Dick Emery. Not only that, I've bought. Um, who was the? I don't think I've got it here. It must be downstairs. Who was the guy who did all the impressions and hit the drink? He was very, very big in the seventies, and suddenly he disappeared. On, and he was BBC One. Um, Mike Yarwood. <clears throat> yeah, that's him. Yeah. Mike Yarwood. I bought um, a DVD of him the other week as well. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got the box set of Dad's Army. I've got the box set of On the Buses. I love it all. And this stuff, and you know, it's, it's still in his wrappers, actually. They sit downstairs waiting to be watched. 
you know. Because well, I started to buy O Dr. Beecham. Yes. Friday High. Yes. Um, yes, my lord. Yes. You, no, you rang me, lord. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, I have his stitches. I've just got um, um, the original St. Trinians. Yes, Doctor, yes, yes. And also bought the new ones. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah. it, because, uh, quite honestly, the comedy stuff on the telly now doesn't really make me laugh. I think, um, I liked keeping up appearances, but even that's ten years old now. Certainly, yeah, certainly these people like, certainly these people Marple. like, like K people like Keith Lemon and all that. I mean, it just yeah. leaves, just you leaves like me Miss Marple? Calm. Eh? Miss Marple? Miss Marple I like, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember Margaret Rutherford? Yes, I do. Yes, yes. I, I, yes, I got them the other week and I watched them. Marvellous. Yeah. And what was the one? Hetty Wayne for... Throp? 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 Hetty Wayne Throp? Oh, that was, um, what's her name? Um, Patricia Rut Routledge. That's it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah. Yeah, it's very hard to buy the, um, the old ones, though. Um, I, I look on... Uh, I, I just type in the Amazon and often these box sets come up on there. Oh, I tell you what, watch yeah. Amazon. Eh? The prices are suddenly starting to go up. Yes, I noticed that. I noticed yeah. that. You were, you, the, the box sets are now can be like 30, 40, 50 quid even. And they, yeah. they were going for 25. We went but for there's this... another place, <laughs> it's called The Hut. I don't know that, The Hut. The Hut. Um, I've been buying a lot of stuff from them. Right. Plus, they're also in the UK, I yeah. think. You know? I'm getting very um, picky now, because if you look around, they're destroying our local infrastructure, our local little stores and shops, aren't they? Oh, yes. Yeah, all you ended up is great big blooming Tesco's and all that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Tesco's is terrible. Mm. I d well, I don't go in there. I d I oh, I, I don't, know. You don't wait really like with Tesco's. your little card. Um, Sainsbury's has got the most just horrible customers in there, you know. Why were you on about Waitrose and your special card with Ronnie? Oh, yeah, well, that's it. Didn't you, didn't you hear that the other way? He keeps getting pulled over for a rescan. No, 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 it gets better. It gets better. I was in fits here. We was in and there. Then I started coughing. I had to turn it off. Hey? I had to turn you off. I was laughing and coughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets I'll better. Because, listen, we went in there yesterday. We went in there yesterday, so once again, I, I got my little trolley, I put my car through and got my handheld scanner, and off I went. He followed yeah. behind. He's put his hand in. He's put his hand in. He's put his card through to get the scanner. Nothing. And well, then he put it what? through again. Now, let me for, listen. I yeah. put it through again, and it come up. Please yeah. seek assistance. <laughs> right, so, of course, he's gone over to the customer services. My card stopped working. So she's gone, oh, yeah, we've got to re-register it again. Okay. <laughs> so then out comes the other credit card. You have to match it up with another card. And, a, and off he went with the shopping. So we're done all the shopping. <laughs> then we had a cup of tea. <coughs> cake each and then we went to the checkout again and um i've had, let me go first because you'll get stuck again oh no it should be all right now he says so i've gone through thank you very much thank you very much sir goodbye you know i stood in front then he went through this is this one so it went it went like that and suddenly the entire system crashed <laughs> the entire system and they spent 10 minutes doing this of course meanwhile if that happens at that particular checkout this is this this is the only checkout you can go to with your handheld things there's only like one checkout with three people on it right and of course this queue's starting to build up now there were six people with baskets for the shopping and his card had crashed the entire system he was going mad he was going, it was hilarious. Why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I've, I've got to do it. I've got to get a bit stronger, and I'm going to pack the wife in the car, and I'm coming to Bracknell. What, just to go to Waitrose? <laughs> no, to meet you and Ronnie. Oh, well, you're always welcome. You're always welcome. I we can meet you. up. Uh, we've got lots of um, uh, tea places or Starbucks or whatever, anything. Cost, no, is it? Cost, cost of coffee, I think there is. One in town. No, I, I've, I've, got to, I've got to meet you and Ronnie, because uh, I think you are the new Ronnie um, Barker and Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> I tell you. He'd, he'd never turn up on time, though. That's the trouble. He's always late. 
You know, always late. You know, you'll be waiting here for, for him to come round at 12 o'clock. And you're at two minutes to 12. Oh, I'm running late. I'll be there at 12.10. Which actually <laughs> means 12.30. You know, he's never, ever on time. We never get there. Oh, We never get there. I tell you. <laughs> you know, because I, I still listen to um, Off The Chart Radio. Yes, yes. That's been yeah. going a while now. Run by, is it Steve Whitlock? Um, no, I thought, um, the young lad was still there. Um, um... Maybe that's another station. No, no, off the chart radio. Yeah, yeah, um, but was, I thought it was Steve Whitlock. Is that not who runs that? Let me have a quick look. I'll have a little look oh, for you. Dear. Don't you hate it when you, when your brain starts to go? Oh, yeah. You know? <coughs> Hang on, I shall tell you in a minute. Yeah. I should tell it's Tim Willett. Off the chart radio, hang on a minute. Tim Willett, don't you remember Tim? Tim Willett, Tim Willett, okay, yeah, I got it, sorry, yeah, I got it. Yeah? Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tim and Tom <laughs> on Monday night. That's right, yeah. Uh, Tom Holt. Yes, Tom Holt, yes, I remember, yeah. And Do these, you remember yeah, the, um, these the people, American guy, Bob Ebert? No, don't remember him. But the, the, that station's been going as long as this show now, isn't it? I think they've been going yeah. about eight years. Yeah, I think they've got an investor that bought them out. Oh, really? But yeah. Tim, Timmy still um, runs it. Yeah. I think, anyway. You know, but... Um, but they don't, they don't... Do they make... They don't, don't make any money, do they? I don't think so. No, see, none of the online stations do, really. You know, I mean, um, until we can knock um, the commercial stations a bit, yes. they, you know, I mean, uh, people just don't do it, do they? No, 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 they don't. You know, but, it's uh, just impossible to make money out of these things, I think, really. Well, <coughs> but that's the way it is, you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Do you know what, I tried to get to listen to you. Did you go live this morning? Uh, we're live now, yeah, yeah. You're live now? Yeah. Well, why are you talking to the audience? I am. Oh, am I on? Of course you are. Oh, I see. I better watch what I say then. <laughs> oh, didn't you know? As soon as you ring up, did you? It's it's every. Um, when you see that, how did you know the show was on this morning? Did you go on the Facebook? Well, I, I, you're not going to believe this, but I get up around about ten o'clock. Yeah. Okay, and it takes me quite a while to get breathing properly again. Right. Yeah. And then once I do. My brain starts to work, and then I think, oh, it's Saturday, I've got to listen to Chris. And every every week, I miss you. Well, it's on, it's, we start at 10, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock uh, we start, not 10, 12. I thought it was 11. No, 12 o'clock. Oh, 11 was when it was on Fridays. I tell you, when you get to 111, you know what I mean, you <laughs> fail at the minute. <laughs> You start to lose it a bit, mate. Yeah, and, and for the people in other countries, I must yeah. tell you, uh, tomorrow at our... Was it go forward tomorrow or backwards? Oh, I'll be older then. Is it forward or backwards tomorrow? Um, well, you gain an hour, don't we? <coughs> yeah, yeah, because the nights get shorter, don't they? So it goes backwards? Or the days get shorter. Does it go backwards? Hey, you're asking an old man who don't give a... Oh, I don't know. I better not swear. Hang on, let me chuck <laughs> clocks. Because you haven't seen my tattoo, have you? Have you got tattoos? I always wanted a couple of those, but I didn't want, um... It's right across my forehead. Across your forehead? Yeah. It, ah. Says, do I, oh, do good I look news. Like I give up? Good news, the clocks go back tomorrow, so that is an hour extra. Yeah. Did yeah. you hear that? What? The tattoo across my forehead is, do I look like I'll give up? Do you look like who? Do I look like I'll give up? <laughs> 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 Probably oh, not. <laughs> well, sir, lovely to talk to you, Mr. Lungtrol. I oh, know. You look after it's yourself. Lovely to talk to you. And thank you for your kind call. Yeah. Remember that. Anyway, Saturdays listen, at twelve o'clock. Listen. Yeah. When she dies. Yeah. Okay, I'm coming after you. Are you coming? Yeah, I'm coming you, then back. You can look after me. So I can love. I'll be moving you. in with you. <laughs> I'm not having anyone moving in with me. Only cats. I love cats. Only cats. <laughs> you want to see my collection of cats? How many I'll you got? Porcelain and that. 
worth a fortune, mate. <laughs> no real ones that you can stroke and cuddle. Mind you, they yeah, don't I'm like not, they don't like I'm being cuddled. No, it, I can imagine that. Breathing. But they they don't like being picked up and cuddled, do they? Cats really? They don't like yeah. to be squeezed. I've got one cat. It's worth about eight hundred thousand. Oh dear me! Well, don't drop it. No, the kids broke it the other day. Oh no! Yeah, I tell you, it broke my heart. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Go on, get off. <laughs> I'll see you soon, all right? Yeah, you take care. I Thanks for ringing, Mr. Long Troll. Ta-da. Bye. Bye-bye now. That's Long Troll. Long time listener. Long time listener, Mr. Long Troll. How lovely to talk to him. It really is. Um, you can join in, by the way, boys and girls. Uh, if you've got Skype, I'll read out a few of your messages in a, in a second. Uh, my Skype username is Chris Reardon. I'll just, because uh, we haven't got that up on the screen today, have we? Sorry, I should have put that up there. Where are we now? There, is, oh, is that it? There we go. Uh, so if you've got Skype, my Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's a Skype username, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Either just send, send a message or indeed you can Skype in and talk to us um, on our little show today. There's also a London phone number, OK, a local London phone number, 20 8133-6358 and there's an email address as well whether you're with us live or watching a recording of the show you can send us an email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk how do you know if you're with us live or you're watching a recording have a little look at your clock if it's just coming up to uh, 20 to 1 on Saturday, the 26th of October 2013, if that's the time where you are now, then you are indeed with us live and you can use the Skype or the phone in, all right? Now, just to let you know, uh, our clocks here in the UK go back one hour tonight. So that may affect the time that you're watching in another country, all right? So beware of that next Saturday. I still be here at 12 o'clock our time. But if your clocks haven't changed backwards, then you may find we are an hour later or an hour earlier, depending on what the time is in your country. Bear that in mind next week. So next week, we will, at the moment, we're BST. Uh, tomorrow, we move to, back to GMT. So next week, the show will be on at 12 midday, GMT. I'm sure there's someone uh, somewhere on the internet where you can sort of look and see what the time is where you are. Um, <clears throat> good morning to Richard. Morning, Richard, in Croydon, who says, Oh my God, good morning. Don't laugh, but I clicked on last week's show by mistake. Still, I'm here now. Well, do try and get your clickings right, will you? I mean, I'm desperate for the numbers. Desperate for the numbers. Uh, Shania says, uh, Tuesday backwards. How do you say Tuesday backwards? Yeah. Oh, no, no, your your birthday's on Tuesday, is it? Oh, well, well, I'll tell you what, Shania, we'll sing the happy birthday now. She's she's pleased about having an extra hour in bed. We will sing Shania happy birthday now. Someone has stolen my birthday song. Where is it? Oh, no. Oh, there it is. You ready, Shania? <coughs> Shania, happy birthday to you. All right? Happy birthday, Shania. Who's going to be... Oh, she hasn't told me how old yet. I think it's going to be 16. 15, 16 or 17. I'm sure you're going to be one of those on Tuesday. So happy birthday then. I'm sure your dad get you something nice. Doesn't need to be expensive as long as it's a thought that counts. Always remember that. Because Marge was saying um, last week she wasn't sure what to get someone. And what did I think? And I said the best things to get people <coughs> are things that you make. 
make yourself. Now, I've been thinking about this, certainly with my sister, because they haven't got loads and loads of money to spend on everyone. Certainly not with all these children that, that my, my, my nephew and his wife and uh, my niece and her husband are chucking out all over the place. We've got an extra four children now. You know, certainly, certainly they haven't got money to burn. So I suggested to Sharon that she makes, because she does this cooking now, she makes things. She makes, uh, she's made jam. And uh, today she made... Was it yesterday she made sweet mincemeat? Which has not, not got meat in it. I don't, know, I don't know why. Who on earth called mincemeat mincemeat? There's two types of mincemeat. There's mincemeat, which is made out of dead animals, right? And there's mincemeat, which is sweet, which I think is made out of suet. And it's a brown... Brown... Some sort of brown sweet sauce. So it's two different types of mincemeat. Anyway, she's been making that. She showed me a big large jar, jar earlier today because I had a FaceTime with my niece. I do like FaceTime. I FaceTime with my niece on, on the uh, Apple iPhone and uh, I usually see my um, great nephew, George, who was there. He's not quite sure of me. He kind of looks a little bit worried when I appear on his... Because she's got the Skype attached to her big telly in the living room. It's good, isn't it? And my face appears, and he doesn't doesn't look quite, you know, quite doesn't know quite what to make of me yet. George, the uh, baby, is only one. But I sat there talking to my niece, and uh, my sister was round there as well, and she showed me this great big jar of mincemeat that she made, you know, sweet mincemeat. I, wonder, I, I mean, who who in their right mind called it mincemeat? Blimmin' idiots! You get very confused. We don't want jars, jars of dead animals ended up on my shelves, thank you very much. But I'm not keen on mincemeat, I must say. So I've asked her, I did ask her to make some tomato sauce, okay? Tomato sauce, a few bottles of tomato sauce, because I love tomato sauce. I have to say that. I do cover my food in tomato sauce. Do you do that? Or do you, you know, is a little, little bit on the side? <laughs> I think when... Uh, a while ago, I did have a little bit on the side of the plate, but now it tends to cover the entire dinner, my tomato sauce. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just do. So I've asked her to make some homemade tomato sauce and possibly some homemade apple sauce, because I like apple sauce. You know, and you can put that on anything. Don't, it doesn't, doesn't need to be... Now, what, what do most people have that with pork? Well, of course, I'm vegetarian, so don't eat that. But, you know, you, know, you can put it on anything. Put it on a burger, on a, on, a, on a corn burger or a veggie burger or something like that. I love apple sauce. I did ask her to make marmalade, but apparently uh, it's the wrong time of the year for those type of oranges, she says. So I says, why, why can't you just use normal oranges? And apparently you can't. They have to be special oranges. It, it might, I think I might be right in saying it's Seville. Seville? Seville oranges? Is it? I think so. It might be Seville oranges. That one. Um, <clears throat> and and I could, I'm trying to think of... Perhaps that might be enough for her to do. And that I've asked from my sister for a Christmas present. Right? My niece, she loves cooking. My niece loves cooking. So, I'm going to ask her to make me a few vegetarian cottage pies. And a couple of things like that. And that, that's my Christmas gift. What better gift can you have than um, <clears throat> something someone has made? And that goes as far as the cards as well. Although, if you go to supermarkets now, you can get some very, very cheap Christmas cards. I personally don't bother with Christmas cards. Now, don't get me wrong. When people send them in, uh, I'm very grateful for them. And they go on. They go and get chucked away. They go on the mantelpiece in the living room. But I, I've never understood. I, I, I just... Um... To get one from your sister is wonderful, right? That's great. Or from even you, if you was to send a Christmas card, that's great. But the people that send, they, they buy boxes and boxes of Christmas cards. And my mum used to do this. She would start writing these damn things in September. <clears throat> and then they would all go in the post the week before Christmas. Yeah, which is, is very thoughtful. She'd, she'd write all, and they'd all be ready. Stacks and stacks of Christmas cards waiting to be sent off. And I used to think, well, why? You know. So I, I don't bother with Christmas cards too much. However, 
I would love to receive a Christmas card made perhaps by, I think they're probably too old to start getting bits of card and glue and glitter on. What better item can you receive from a child than a homemade Christmas card, which is, you know, just a bit of paper folding in half, a bit of glue on there and a bit of glitter sprinkled on it. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Eh? And homemade things. <coughs> I'm sure perhaps some of the boys watching the show today or listening to the show might be able to do things with wood. Perhaps you could make someone a stool. I bet that wouldn't even cost you much, would it? You bet you, your know-how, you see. Your know-how to receive a little stool someone has made. I have downstairs <coughs> a little... Excuse me a minute. <coughs> I have downstairs a little stall that uh, apparently was made by someone blind. My mum bought it years and years ago, and um, when my mum died, it came here. And there's just something very special about this little wooden stall that someone blind had made to, to raise money, I suppose, for uh, perhaps a, a home for the blind or something like that. It's great to receive things that you have someone has made. It really is really is. So that's what I've asked for my sister uh, for Christmas. Talking of uh, home cooking, I made this week... Oh, let me, let me, let me do some... Yeah, I, sorry, I'll do these messages in a second. I made this week uh, chilli con carne, but without the meat, in, in, replacing the mince meat with um, uh, corn like mince, corn mince. Chilli con carne in the slow cooker. Now, usually I do that in a great big pot on the stove and I do loads... OK, but the thing is, you have to keep stirring the bloody thing all the time or it sticks to the bottom. Isn't that awful, ladies? You know, when you've made something and it's all stuck to the bottom, burnt bits on the bottom. Have you ever have you ever eaten like made like, I don't know, tomato soup or something? And uh, you get burnt on it and the tomato soup actually tastes burnt. Isn't that vile? <laughs> Anyway, so I put all this contents, a uh, couple of cans of chopped tomatoes. I put five bits of garlic in there. Five, um, they're not bulbs, five segments, five um, cloves. Five cloves of garlic in there. <clears throat> and I think I told you a few months ago of the way to peel garlic. Very, very easy. You no need to sit there with a blooming knife trying to scrape off a bit here and then peel and then the, and then the skin breaks. What you need is two metal bowls. Or, as I found, a metal saucepan. Must be metal. And what you do is you get your garlic bulb, okay, and you take off the bits of clove, the, the cloves, right, as many as you want. In my case, I took five bits. I thought this is going to be really garlicky. I bet people that night couldn't come up and talk to me. I mean, I didn't notice anyone moan. But, you know, hello, how are you? And they start kind of take a step back when all this garlic's coming out of your mouth, don't they? Eh? Anyway, so you get these cloves of garlic. You put it in the saucepan, or, or it did say on, on the internet, two metal bowls. Okay? You put one... You know, so you put the, the cloves of garlic in a bowl, put the other bowl on top and shake it violently for about 20 seconds. Now, <coughs> last week, <laughs> I thought, well, I'll get two metal bowls. So I went on my favourite shopping experience of all time, Amazon. OK, because we love Amazon. One click ordering. We love it. You see your item, you click once and it arrives. I love it. It's fabulous. Click, and it comes. Marvellous. Anyway, so I thought I'd better order two metal bowls. And the choices were a five litre one and a ten litre one. <clears throat> now, I have no perception of size or weight or mass. Just doesn't exist for some reason in my head. Distance is another one. I'm no good at distances. How far is it? Oh, it's about a mile, you know. It actually ends up being five miles or something like that. So I ordered, I, I ordered two five-litre metal bowls. 
thinking that the ten the ten litre ones are probably far too big. So it must be the five litre ones I must buy. Okay? Bearing in mind the only reason I'm buying these is to put my little cloves of garlic in and shake the bowl. And look what arrived. This massive <laughs> What arrived was a massive stainless steel bowl. Bowl. And it really is quite massive. It's too big. Can you hear it? Love it. Two of these arrived. About twenty-two pounds altogether. So I mean these are obviously far too big. But I suppose I can use them to put fruit in or use them as a mixing bowl. Although what I've done, I realised what I'd done and then I rang up Ron and says, Oh, I've got a little present for you. I didn't actually buy it for him, but I thought, well, what am I going to do with two metal bowls? And I thought, well, I'll give one to him and pretend that I bought it as a present. So this, this is actually his one because I've unwrapped mine. This is his one in the, um, in the, uh, in the cellophane. So what am I going to do now? Stage two, use a metal saucepan. I have metal saucepans. Don't know why I didn't think of that in the first place. So you put the, you drop the little cloves of garlic in the saucepan and shake it violently, as I say, for about 20 seconds. And then you take it out. If you're very lucky, at this point, the skin will have already been shred off, <clears throat> which was the case with one piece of garlic, okay? The other ones, but if the skin looks like it's still on, believe me, it will have become loosened. And you just pick it up and you kind of wipe it with your thumb and it just drops off. Wonderful. That's how you peel garlic easily. Have you learned anything from me today, boys and girls? Have I managed to talk you? Chris Reardon's cookery class. Could be a whole new show. Better than that old crap they put on. The Great British Bake Off and Delia Smith's Cookery and Gordon Ramsay's Chef and... Oh, I hate them all. I hate all these cookery programmes on the telly. I really do. Cheap blooming rubbish. So, had the garlic in there, a couple of cans of tomatoes, uh, a tube of tomato paste, um, the corn mince, chopped up an onion, chopped up some mushrooms. And that's it. Put it all in the slow cooker, switched it on, one o'clock in the morning, next afternoon, twelve o'clock in the afternoon, turned it off, oh my god, delicious. Oh, and, and chilli powder, a little bit too much chilli powder, mind, my, maybe, my, my throat was a bit burning, but that's okay. Which caused its own problem the entire week, because, you know, obviously, you, you, you make this stuff in a slow cooker, well, you've got three or four meals there. And rather than freeze it, I thought, well, I'll just keep having it, you know. So by day three, I wasn't fed up with it. I still loved it. But terrible heartburn all week. Really was. So I made it, let me think, I made it Tuesday. Tuesday night I came in from work. One o'clock in the morning, put it all in there, went to bed. So I started eating it. I had it Wednesday. I had it Thursday. I had it Friday. Terrible heartburn all week because I put so much chilli in. It's not supposed to be really bad for your heartburn. Did you know that? It's not just pain. Can cause ca cancer if you keep getting it all the time. Yes. So homemade chilli con carne. Maybe I should make some of that and send it to my sister. No, I can't do that, can I? No, I'd have to buy her something, I think. Right, messages, messages, messages. Um, Marge says, Chris, women can do woodwork too. I have done that. Oh, what have you made then, Marge? Out of wood. Do let us know. <clears throat> she said, um, with the tones, your test tones, test tone, one was test tone, <phone rings> test tone, with the test tones, oh, hang on, I've lost the message. <clears throat> it stimulates brain functions. I do use sounds that help my migraines. I'm not joking. Sometimes check it out. I will have a look at that then. I'll hold on to that. Actually, um, had a bit of a headache, but rubbed a lotion named Two Old Goats on my forehead, and now it's very good. It's a funny name, but essentially oils like lavender. I like lavender. I've got lavender um, fabric softener in my washing machine. I like lavender. Essentially, oils like lavender, peppermint, great for pain. So, oh, I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Uh, old Shania is going to be 17 years old on Tuesday. Good, that's so old, Shania. So old. I'm going to have to ask you to stop watching and please let young people back watching, please. We can't have too many old people watching this show. 
I'm sorry, Shania. <laughs> That's how it is. Uh, Terry says, Chris, remember what you told me about when I was moaning about listeners to my internet radio station? Do it for yourself. If other people enjoy it, it's a bonus. Oh, no, no, I don't worry. I don't worry, just someone asked. So I just wanted to put you straight. There's just a few of us, very select people here. Very select people. <coughs> All right. And uh, by the way, uh, you can't get the video version of this on iTunes anymore. I did mention that last week, okay? Uh, anyone who's subscribed to iTunes can no longer get the video version on iTunes. Uh, the company that was doing that for me has changed the rules and I don't fit in with their new thing, so we're off there. I did look around, but the thing is with video files are very, very large. And... I would have to start paying, and it's very expensive to upload video um, uh, podcasts. It is actually quite expensive to do that, okay? Either that or just do five-minute shows. Yeah, I won't get anything done at all then, will we? So you can't get the video version of this on iTunes anymore. You can, of course, still get it on YouTube. You can subscribe on YouTube and tick the email when there's a new show thing on there. Uh, the YouTube username is Chris Reardon UK. All right? Chris Reardon UK is the YouTube name. Uh, Marge says she made a table in wood shop in school. Oh, very impressive. See, I'm not very good at doing anything like that, Marge. <coughs> Woodwork, metalwork. I was never any good at that at school, really. You know, which is a bit of a shame. Never mind. Anyway, hope you, hope you like your happy birthday there. Little Shania. I love you, darling. Email address, uh, Chris, <coughs> at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Let's, uh, we didn't quite finish telling you what, how many people watched the show live last week, did I? Um, I can find that. Can I find that for you somehow? Uh, there it is, there it is. Okay, so people that watched the live version of this last Saturday, uh, eight in the UK, four in the States, one in Russia, one in Indian, one in Canada, and one in Malaysia. All right? How many people watched in the UK? 27 minutes, average watch. 13 in the States, 4 seconds in Russia, 1 second in India, 1 second in Canada, 1 second in Malaysia. So that, that's, what, that's the, the information that comes down from YouTube. Alright? As a couple of people wanted to know that. <clears throat> emails. Are you ready for these emails? Hello to Thomas in Poland. Hello, Thomas. Who writes? My conscious compelled me to write this email. The truth is, I'm not listening anymore. Oh, God, I'm just hemorrhaging people left, right and centre. I'm not listening anymore. I mean, your show, of course, which is good, as usual, I'm sure. Maybe, in some extent, it's your fault, too. Because... You inspired me to swimming and running. You may remember, um, a while ago I was doing running, jogging. Well, I stopped a few years ago. Um, this year, I actually started it again. And I was surprised at how quickly I was able to start running again, if you see what I mean. Um... I think it started off as about 30 seconds. Then the next day, you know, you run 30 seconds, then you have a bit of a breather, then you run again. Then the next day I built up to a minute. And very, very quickly, I built back up to about 15 minutes non-stop running, which is actually the distance in running between my house and Ronnie's house. Running. 15 minutes. That's all it is. Trouble is, you get to the other end. Like, <sighs> no, I'm actually... After a couple of runs, you're not like that anymore. But I, I used to smell a lot after I'd run, you know, the sweat. And he'd start moaning because he's got a very overactive nose. 
He just moans, oh, you stink. That so I'll go up and use the shower then. You know, and I'd have a shower there. But when you come back down, you know, when you do running, you're not carrying spare sets of clothes on you, are you? I mean, you're just not. <laughs> you are not carrying spare sets of clothes. So, you know, you go, have the shower, come back down, and put your old clothes on again. Maybe if I left a set of clothes. But I stopped when I started having trouble with my feet, which which just goes on and on. I've still got trouble with the feet at the moment, as you know. Um, Long-term fixing. You have to put things in your shoes. And, oh, I just, well, I just wish they'd get better. I, for example, at work, I, I like to stand behind my DJ box. And I have a little bit of a dance. I have to sit down often now after a couple of hours. Or at least have little breaks from the standing up. So I have to do that now. But that's one of the things in getting older. You know, that's it. Um, so, yes, I, I did do the running. And I enjoyed the running. I stopped. I've stopped again now. But I still do the swimming. I still swim uh, Monday to Friday usually. I do about 60 lengths down the uh, the Virgin place. Thomas says, Two years ago was my first 10-minute run after which my lungs wanted to burst. Well, I should think they would do after that. Was that... Was that so you went straight out and ran for 10 minutes after never running before? You know, maybe that's not... not it's not always a good thing to do that. You've got to build something up, you see. You've got to be, you can't just go out and do it. You know, like now, I used to run for an hour. A couple of years ago, I was going out and running for an hour non-stop. If I tried to do that now, I'd probably die. Because your body is not used to it. You've got to do it slowly. Build up slowly. That first, if, if There might be people listening to the show today who have never run. And they want to try it. I go, well, try it. Don't run for more than 30 seconds, maximum. You run for 30 seconds, and then you walk. When you've got your breath back, run for another 30 seconds, then you walk. Do that five times. That's it. That's enough. Do that for a couple of runs, and then try to run for maybe 45 seconds a minute. And then stop, walk, gentle pace. Then do it again, one minute. That's how you do it. You must build it up. Do not go out and try and run for an hour non-stop. You've got a good chance of dying. Your body is just not used to it. Your heart won't be able to keep up. You'll be lacking oxygen. But, it's, you know, you run for ten minutes the first time. Wow. <clears throat> anyway, this year... I ran my first marathon. So how long has he been running? Two years. Two years. He started two years ago. He ran his first marathon in four hours and 30 seconds. Four hours and 30 seconds. Now, I, I, I would have... Sorry, I'm just moving around here. I'm trying to get a bit comfortable. Going. I, would have, I, I have no interest in doing a marathon. I just don't see the... I, I don't have... I wouldn't... Something like that. It's not that... I would want to do it so that I could then say I'd run four hours and 30 minutes. Do you see what I mean? I, I'm not very competitive like that. However, you know, you've run a marathon in four hours. So that's very impressive. From not running two years ago to building up to that in two years. Very good, Thomas. He's, uh, and then Thomas goes on to say, not a very impressive time, but I run all the time without walking or stopping, even for drinking, and I'm proud of it. So not only did he run for four hours and 30 minutes, he didn't stop. How do you do that? <laughs> four hours and 30 minutes non-stop. Impressive. Don't, don't be not impressed with yourself. You know, anyone who come up to me and says, I can run for 10 minutes now, that would impress me. It absolutely would. Very impressive. After all, I am over 50 years and many younger years behind me. I mean, this just gets better and better, doesn't it? So he never ran two years ago. He's, he's now done a marathon in four hours and 30 minutes. And he's over 50 years old. How can you say that you're not very impressed? You've impressed everyone listening or watching this show. It's fantastic, Tom. Fantastic. 
I have less and less time for my computer. Yeah, well, I think I have as well now. I'm on the computer mainly to do work things. And my show. Download the latest music from the uh, record companies that they send me. Because you don't get CDs or anything anymore in the post. You just get CDs. Now it's a, a, a thing that is, is all online and you download all the new music you see from the record companies that are kind enough to send them to me. <clears throat> I've less and less time for my computer and I've had to skip something. Previously, I downloaded your show and listened on my MP3 player, but now I'm learning Japanese instead. Wow. Please don't take it personally. No, I don't take it personally, Thomas. Maybe when I'm, say when I'm ill, staying all day in bed, I will resume listening to your show. Unfortunately, I'm in great health now, and time is short. Best regards from Thomas. P.S. I don't understand people saying they are bored. I don't know what it means to be bored. Do you? No, I don't. How do people get bored? There is so much to do. So much to do all the time. There really is. I've, I've, been, I've always been like that, you know. Um, I find not enough hours in the day, ever. There's never enough hours in the day for me to do things. And I'm, struggle, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling looking for times to sleep, if you see what I mean. <coughs> and my best mate Ronnie is always telling me to, you know, take it easy or something. Look, a couple of weeks ago, my Sunday, I, uh, my Sunday karaoke was cancelled. All right? New manager, doesn't like karaoke. That's, 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 the, that's the job we're in, right? I'm straight on Facebook, straight on the Facebook, straight on the phone. Oh, I'm looking for a Sunday, and I've got one now. I've got another one. I cannot sit still. Another manager of one of the other places I work at, his name's Jimmy, he quickly sent me a message saying, like, why don't you have one night off a week? I can't. I can't. It's too much to do. What would I do? Sit there and watch? Well, I wouldn't sit there and watch the telly. I'd come up here and find more stuff to do. I'd probably do another show, you know, or something like that. I can't do nothing. And when it comes to watching the telly, Thomas, um, I cannot watch a whole television programme. It's all in bits. Because oh, I can't be sitting here for half an hour wasting time watching the telly. I have terrible problems relaxing. Terrible problems. Anyway. <coughs> nice to hear from you, Tom. Presumably you're watching this or listening to this one just to hear your um, uh, your email read out. I must say, for a while, while I was running, I did download talking podcasts rather than... Oh, hang on. Maybe that's why I'm coughing. Just a second. Let me have some asthma stuff. That's better. Maybe that stopped me coughing now. Um, I did download talking podcasts when I was doing my jogging. But I found it didn't, for me, it didn't work as well as the music. You have some music on there and you kind of run to the beat of the music. Do you do that, Thomas? And that's quite nice. I'd have my, what would be on my playlist? Oh, it'd be a bit of ABBA. Uh, a musical number, Barry Manilow, of course, but generally fast numbers. <clears throat> but I've, I'd put a couple of ballads on there as well, you know, because so sometimes so you can just slow down the pace for a little while. Thank you, Thomas. Nice to hear from you. Uh, March says, I think Tom is wrong. There is always time for you, Chris. One hour in 24, you can make that time, even for a bath before bed. No excuse not to listen to you. Sorry. Thank you, Mars. Yeah, Thomas, you should be listening at all times. All times, my friend. <clears throat> right. Um, Cyber John. Cyber John has become a regular correspondent to the show, sending in regular audio emails. And here is the audio message from Cyber Tom for this week. Hi, Chris. I like football. Unlike many British people on Sunday, it does not replace the sanctity, worship and peace of mind of a church at the weekend as it does for so many of our countrymen. 
but I admire a fast-paced, exciting game as illustrated by England in their do-or-die match against Poland, a game which exhibited daring, talent, speed and ultimately victory for our national team, undergoing as it is the casting off of the so-called golden generation of Terry Beckham and Ferdinand, who won nothing. The England team will do themselves proud in Brazil. I'm convinced of it. I'm delighted that the Americans will be joining us in what is the fastest growing sport in our former colony. Uh, Australia and New Zealand still have a great chance to join us. And no one can gainsay the wonderful World Cup that South Africa hosted. It was great. However, racist chanting in Russia recently belies the undertones we might expect there in 2018. As for Qatar, do me a favour. If the world governing body of football had decided to host a contest in Antarctica, they would have had fewer questions to answer. To have our beloved game enacted under a piercing desert sun is telling. Corruption and nepotism abound. Sepp Blatter, the arch Sternbahn Führer of the governing body, has revealed a streak of insanity inherent in leaders of past Germanic empires. He is indicted in these sports crimes along with his poodle Michel Platini. But we could not do anything to forestall this madness or affect it in any way. Indeed, there's more madness in which we should look to the fans. Fans who are bringing shame and danger to our beloved game. A drum is a large instrument. You can't conceal it under a cagoule, Sweezy. So why is it that when I went to a British Premiership match last year involving Wigan Athletic and Fulham, someone from the London supporters produced a percussion instrument out of nowhere and began banging it relentless? Does this improve the passing play of the left-backs? I don't think so. This is what moronic Latin and Turkish ultras do. Those fans who are not content with just stabbing fans from other countries, but have to break beat on rattly snares to celebrate the fact. I focus my magnifying lens on drumming generally. I was walking through a seemingly peaceful Hyde Park recently, when the jolly atmosphere was distorted suddenly by a ring of drumming people banging out a cacophony. Let's take it further. Helen Mirren recently starred as the Queen in a monologue performance in one of Soho's wonderful theatres. During an epic soliloquy, the air was suddenly rent by the ba da 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 of a ring of drummers just outside the tradesman's entrance to the theatre. She came tearing out of it and put the fear of God in them. Drumming is crap. Morons play it at football matches and ruin the spectacle for the rest of us. Drumming is egocentric. It's equivalent to playing old Puff Daddy tunes at full volume with your car window down. It is glib. It is, hear my stuff, I exist, and I will make an importune, aggressive disturbance of your existence. No one really likes a drum solo halfway through a gig. Something designed just to give the real musicians a break. How many bands have a drummer as the main guy? Genesis did. Boo. And the darkness. Blah. Okay. There has been revealed, as if we were not already aware, of the racism inherent in the Eastern Bloc recently. And what did UEFA do? They gave Russia the World Cup. Hmm. Russia and Qatar. What do they have in common? Lots of oil. Now we have people throwing fireworks around at matches which started off in bloody Italy and has migrated to Man City. Apparently the online maxim is, it's no game without a pyro. Really? Sounds as intelligent as, no opera without free magic mushrooms, which will apparently enhance the experience. What are these people going to matches for? To see a Sonne Lumiere show? I will, I will tell you what I would do if someone was playing anything, drums, trumpet, marimba, sousaphone, next to me as I was trying to watch a match. They would be deprived of the ability to play said instrument. And yes, I extend that to the Barmy Army Band. They play one boring tune, as boring as our national anthem, again and again and again. 
It seems not enough for people to go to a football match and enjoy it. They have to become part of the spectacle, whether it is by smuggling the almost invisible drum into a stadium, or lighting pyrotechnics, or invading the pitch, or shouting the most incredible abuse at the referee. When I was nine, I was standing next to some blokes watching a Northern League second division match and they slagged the ref off saying he was a bastard, excuse my language, and blind. I turned around to them and said quite fiercely, as only a nine-year-old would, that my father, the man in black, was neither blind nor illegitimate and that their language was inappropriate. My dad was a great referee and he once booked David Beckham. <laughs> Did he really book David Beckham? I've, uh, thank you so much for that, as always. Uh, we like your, your rants. That's Cyber John. Um, I, I, I have no interest and in never have in, in football. I I've, I've just I just don't get it. I don't understand football at all. Um, no interest. But uh, thank you for that, sir. Uh, you're talking about drum beats. And yes, they're very, very noisy places, football match. I came across this little drum beat thing the other day. I just want to play this for you because I think this sounds brilliant. Just, just a little drum beat jing jingle that I came across the other day. Here we go. Oh yeah, little drum beat thing I came. I don't know what it is, where it came from, but I just quite like that. And as you were mentioning the drum beats there, um, yes, I thought I'd uh, play that to you. I don't understand why the Eastern Bloc countries do appear to be coming across as quite racist. The only thing is I can think of is that they just haven't caught up with everyone else. And maybe they just need a little bit more time. You know? You can't change things, unfortunately, overnight. It was certainly the case here. Certainly the case in the United States. I like to think of London now as a pretty unracist place. Really. But you do see a lot of this stuff on the, um, on the television when you've got football matches coming from other countries. Not that I watch them, but you get it on the news. Don't you? And it is a shame. Maybe they just haven't caught up with everyone else. I don't know. Email address of the show once again, gang. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk uh, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk uh, Terry H. Wants to know, be interested to hear your views on the recent gas prices, Chris. I work for British Gas and they've removed our reployee discount of £200. I know your green views, solar panels, so is it justified? The gas increases? Um, if you believe what the power companies are saying, they actually say that they make very little profit from each person. Very, very little profit. And the biggest problem is the wholesale prices from places, again, like Russia. You know, we buy a lot of gas from Russia. I'm not quite sure where else we buy it from. If the wholesale prices there are going up, what, what can we do about it? That's the thing. Their profits do seem to be huge. And when you've got, like, chief executives getting three, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand pounds a year, that annoys me. That someone 
is almost making mis money out of out of people's misery because there are people here who cannot afford to turn the heating on. Something needs to be done. I think half the pro I think the, the main problem of it is Terry is that we now buy in so much energy from other countries. So we really are at the mercy of places like Russia and uh, Gazprom, isn't it? Gazprom there. If they increase the prices, what can we do? What can we say? Well, we're not paying it. Okay, we'll turn it off. Psst, no gas. And I think successive governments here should have looked at other ways to do it. I mean, we've got so much coal here. It's all very well saying, you know, it's 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 it, it's not green. Well, it is. It can be. You know, you, you, you put things on these <coughs> power stations to catch the particles and all, all the carbon and all that business. I'm not a technician, I don't know how, but I know you can do it. I was a great fan of Margaret Thatcher. I think closing down the coal industry was a dreadful mistake. It may have seemed right at the time because it was expensive. I don't know the, the, the true story of miners and how much money they were getting and all that business. There's probably some truths and untruths on both sides. But we had all that coal. We're providing most of our own energy ourselves. Therefore, we were, in effect, in control of our own prices. And you can make gas from coal, can't you? I remember when I was a child and the gas people had to come round because we were moving from coal-made gas to natural gas from under the sea. And obviously, do you remember, uh, if, you're, if you're of an age, they actually had to come round and change all our pipes in all the houses because the old type of pipes weren't suitable to carry the natural gas. Before that, the gas was made from coal. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm right there. But we were in control of our own prices. So all the coal went, we started input, we got the gas from the North Sea, which was all well and good, and it was cheap, and that was it, and prices were reasonable. Gas and electricity prices were reasonable. But we've run out. There's no more left. Or at least we haven't found it yet. And we sold a load of it as well abroad. Why on earth did we sell our own gas? We could be still using that now. Right? So now we buy it in, we're at the mercy of all these other countries. I do believe that we should continue to pump money into renewable sources. I'd like to see big solar panel farms. I'd like to see um, more windmills. I'm pro-windmill, I'm afraid. Um, when I see a windmill going around in the country, it doesn't spoil the the scenery for me. I think they look okay. Swaves of them all over the country. I actually don't think they look ugly at all. I also see a windmill going around and not making any bad gases. Not polluting the air. Once it's up, that's it, isn't it? I mean, what? how much maintenance do you have to do on these things? I think a lot of it is the green taxes. Now, the government would tell you that the green taxes on your electricity bills, which is quite a lot on there, you know. We're not talking a few pence. That's part of it as well. They say the green taxes are required to put up more wind farms and things like that. How much of that is true, I, I don't know. I don't know. But the other thing, I, I, what I quite don't understand, right, is that if you are a power company, why do we, the taxpayer, have to subsidise you putting up wind turbines and solar panels and things like that? Why are we having to subsidise that, you, as a private company? Surely, 
You have to invest. You have to borrow that money, and you have to invest that money to make money, because that's how it works with everything else. You know, if I want to set up a business, I can't go somewhere, uh, you know, and say, "Okay, um, can I have a load of money to set this up?" No, I would have to take a loan to do this. So. Why is it that the power companies have already got all this money coming in from me and you, and subsidies from the taxpayer? Why is it that they get all this money for nothing from the taxpayer to put up these wind turbines? I don't get it. I I just cannot understand that at all. You see what I mean? And the other thing, Terry. Is I'm getting fed up seeing the adverts for how to save money on your electricity. Put on how many times do we have to hear someone saying that we need our loft insulated, we need our water? What happens if, like me, you've done all these things? We've been hearing this for years now. Most people. I'm sure have done all these things. They have insulated their loft for nothing, because they were doing that for nothing a while ago, weren't they? They have filled their walls with foam. They have put draft exclude around the windows. They have had double glazing, and yet still, the bills continue to go up. I'm sure we must be getting close to the point now where everyone's done all these things. You're wasting, but you keep telling us what to do. There is nothing else I can do. I've done it all. I've gone a bit further than most people. When I had a bit of money a few years ago, I had the solar panels put on the roof. My bills are very cheap. I'm okay, Terry. To be honest, I'm okay. Right? My gas bill is far, far bigger. Then my electricity bill. My electricity bill is really low. I pay about nine pounds a month electricity, and that's because of the solar panels. But not everyone's got money to afford solar panels. And it's funny you should ask this, Terry. My brother-in-law and my sister、um, recently noticed they have a big house. Up in Lincolnshire, now it's a big house. It's a big house to heat. They have just put up their monthly, monthly electricity bill, electric and gas bill rather, dual fuel, to just over. Are you ready? Five hundred pounds a month. Five. Hundred pounds a month. Now, as I say, it's a big house. It's it must be three times the size of this house. And can you just have imagine having an electricity and gas bill of five hundred pounds a month? It's unbelievable. So he's on the phone, and letters are going to and forth now. I, I honestly don't know what he's going to do. A little while ago, he did have money for, so he hasn't got it now. You know, solar panels and all that. And I did say to him, then you know, get some solar panels on your roof. They work. I'd already had them a couple of years. I said they work, but he didn't do it. Now he's not. You see, the thing is, you know, you've you've got to have the money to put the solar panels on the roof in the first place. And then look at it long term. Long term, I'm saving a fortune here. My gas, gas is like forty-five pound a month, and I hardly have the heating on. I've told you before, Ronnie always comes round here and says it's cold. I don't feel. Look at me, I'm sitting here in a t-shirt today, right? I really don't feel the cold. My, it's got to be really cold for me to turn on the heating. But I do notice. I, I have noticed, Terry.、Um, you know, you, you leave it for as long as you can, and then there's one day when it's just so cold, and you turn it on. Right. Once you've turned the heating on for the winter, 
it's difficult to turn it back off again. Do you know what I mean? I'll start off, you know, I'll put it on for, you know, put it on for an hour and then just hit the hour button so it comes on for an hour and then goes off. But as the winter goes on, you then for oh well I had it on yesterday. I might not as well have it on. So once you've once you've started turning it on, it's difficult not to turn it off again until it starts warming up again in the spring. <laughs> and I do. I think probably the most. Um, I don't. I don't know. Do you live on your own? Do you live on your own, Terry, or are you with your parents? I'm not sure. But I think one of the cheapest ways to keep warm is an electric blanket. I mean, that's lovely, that is. You just put it on for like 10 minutes before you go to bed and then you climb in it. And flannelette sheets. Flannelette sheets in the winter. I've already put mine on. Much, much warmer than normal sheets. I've got an electric blanket. It, I have used that a few times, actually, already since um, since beginning of October. Goes on for like, you know, maybe 20 minutes or something like that. I get in bed, it's all lovely and toasty. And then you warm up yourself. So that's probably the cheapest way of doing it. Electric blanket or hot water bottle. But hot water bottles, they go all, oh, they're not horrible, didn't they? And, you know, after an hour, or well, a couple of hours, and you wake up in the morning and you put your foot, and it's, oh, it's horrible. It's cold and like rubbery thing on the bottom of your feet. I'm not too keen on that at all. So uh, I don't know if, it, have you got an electric blanket, Terry? You must get one of those. All right. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK is my email address. Just got some, uh, just gone uh, half past one on Saturday, the 26th of October, 2011, uh, 2013. Uh, yeah, Terry lives on his own. I don't suffer the cold badly, but I feel sorry for my nan who is on limited income. Yes. Yeah, it's elderly people. They should be getting more help. I think they get two. Is it two hundred pounds a year um, fuel allowance, which isn't an awful lot of money. You see, you know, my my um, my sister in the big house, you know, five hundred pounds a month. They want to take off them now for their electric and gas bill. I, it, it has to be said, there is her, there is him, there is my nephew Jimmy, and there is Martin, my brother-in-law's mother. So there's only four of them in there, in this great big house. There are other answers. The one that comes to mind is move to a smaller house. But if I said to that, to either his sister or I, they would say, well, why should we? Which is understandable. Well, you should to be able to afford a, a much less bill my nephew and his wife and their two children they have a two-bedroomed house at the moment their gas and electric bills are combined 87 pounds a month my electric and gas bills are combined 47 pounds a month because of the solar panels of which the majority of that is for gas and i don't understand really myself um even with, with with the gas, as I say, I, I rarely have the heating on. The hot water, I might turn it on for, might put the hot water on for about 10 or 20 minutes a day, if that. And they, that equates to nearly 40 quid a month. I don't have a combination boiler. I have an old boiler of about, oh, it must be 16 or 17 years old, my boiler now. So that's probably something to do with it as well. The only thing is, as well as the electric making solar panels on the roof, I have the hot water ones, OK? And I don't think if you have a combination boiler, because that heats up the water as you use it, doesn't it? It doesn't make a tank. Whereas my solar panel on the roof in the summer gives me free hot water into the tank, OK? And then you don't need to put the boiler on at all. So I don't know. I mean, if I wanted a combination boiler... It's it's difficult to work out, really, because I wouldn't be using that so that that wa hot water panel anymore. That wouldn't be used, I don't think. So there's my answer on that. All right, Terry. Um, okay, email here then from Marge, who sent this in last week. Thank you, Marge. Dear Chris. Oh, let me just check my um. Oh, we got a couple of emails here. 
Good morning, Richard. Ah, oh, Richard, just sent you a message on YouTube. Oh, OK, I'll have a little look on there. I'll have a little look on there then. Right, thank you, Richard. Uh, not not Richard... Uh, not not the other Richard, that's Richard Barron, up, who's up north. Thank you, Richard. Um, sorry, I'm doing ten things at once here. Oh, it's Craig. Craig has, Craig has just sent in a, uh, an email as well, so I'll read that in a second, Craig. Mart says, Dear Chris, I was recently watching a video on YouTube with David Ratcliffe, Daniel Ratcliffe, and his new movie called Horns. They showed a clip from it, and it amazed me because he's doing the movie in an American accent, which is really good. I was curious, can you do the American accent like for an entire chat show or at least a few minutes? Well, I don't know, Marge. I don't know. No, I can't. Can't do accents. I can do an Australian accent. And a very good morning to you and welcome to today's United Kingdom talk. My name's Chris Reardon and we're coming to you from Royal Berkshire. Lovely to be with you for today. Back to Marge's email then. I know there's sites that can teach you accents like British, Scottish, Spanish, etc. It's just kind of cool to hear a Brit who sounds American. I don't know... So not, not very good at accents. I did know Hugh Laurie, who played on the TV show House, did it in an American accent, and I really didn't know he was British before not that, not seeing the other TV show he did, a bit of Fry and Laurie. No, I, d I don't know that one. March says, I was watching some of your old videos. Um, she says, yes, I'm still in catch-up mode. And I saw where someone sent you little Buddhas. Did you ever find out the meaning of those? And do you still have them? Yes, they are. I think they're downstairs. Little Bu I know the little Buddha do you mean. I'll see if I can find them out and I'll bring them up for you next week, all right? See if I can still find those. Um, she sends a, a, a link there which shows different ones if you still do and haven't looked it up. So I'll see if I can find those little Buddhas for you next week, actually. Let me just put a little circle around that to remind me later. It's got colder here now, down to the 40s at night. That's uh, Fahrenheit, so they're, uh, I think, below freezing or just above it. Having to drive my van more than my Honda Rebel motorcycle as it's so cold in the mornings. I hate that because I save so much gas riding my motorcycle than the van. Um, yeah, uh, we, we have had an, an incredibly warm October, really. It really has been quite pleasant. Um, we're up in the... Uh, mid 60s still mid 60s we should be in the 50s now we absolutely should be in the 50s now but we're in, we're in the mid 60s which is, is a quite a pleasant temperature do you have amazon prime yes we do i don't have it because you have to pay extra for that don't you have to pay something a month for that amazon prime i think i got a free 30-day trial and it made it where i ordered some items it was shipped like in two days well, I mean, you say that. I find most stuff on Amazon revive, arrive, seems to arrive here in a couple of days, uh, Marge. So I don't know. It has a ton of movies and TV shows as well, but most of the movies are B-movies or old ones. I've been on a marathon of Eureka TV show. We seem to be getting a lot of UK actors here in the US, which is fine with me. Seems actors... And actresses from there are much better than the ones we have in America. I love the first part of the show. Being human, that guy who played the werewolf, 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 actually has uh, so many big ears. Uh, however, has such big ears. Sorry. Um, I'm always into science fiction and stuff. I found online ways to watch Doctor Who and many of the sci-fi from the UK for free. I bought a new antenna, that's uh, aerial, uh, from Amazon for $36. It has a built-in turning motor <coughs> amplifier, which I was surprised to get it so cheap. It had high ratings, however, and it does pull in about 30 channels for me. I like to watch the old TV shows on one channel. What's your favourite old TV show and any here from the States? My old favourite TV show is Dad's Army. I love Dad's Army. Uh, old TV shows from the US, Dallas. Star Trek. Uh, Little House on the Prairie. 
the Waltons. Don't think of any others for now. Batman. Da 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 da. da. Batman. Yeah, there's some some old stuff that I like there. Oh, what was the um. Marine Boy. That was a cartoon thing. Marine Boy. Uh, Top Cat. Scooby Doo. Tom and Jerry. Yeah, lot, lots of old US shows are good. Lots of old US shows are good. Um, oh, Marge says Amazon Prime is a one-time fee. I don't know if it is here. I don't know if... I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Amazon Prime. I didn't want to call in again today because I don't want to hog the airtime for others. So just this note to update part of my boring life for you to share with your viewers. Your life is not boring, Marge. It's not boring. It's very kind of you to leave other room for other people to ring in. Very kind. Uh, Samhain is next week, which is the origin of Halloween. Only we'll wait till the weekend next week to do my ritual. I practice honouring my ancestors... And it's a time you can actually visit with them if you like. I usually just put out an empty plate for my dogs who have crossed over and have fond memories of them. Oh, that's nice. It's also time for the harvest, which is not just if your farmer uh, has the things you have accomplished in the year. It's actually New Year's for pagans as myself. I'm not into the gory stuff like they do on Halloween. I like simple fun, but no kids come to my house since I'm out in the country. I think I may dress up and go down this Saturday in the next town uh, because they have a Riders for Jesus church that is having a trunk or treat. They hand out candy to kids from the back end of their vehicles from 10am 10, 10 to 1pm. I may go in my witch paraphernalia and help hand out candy. They won't know I'm a Wiccan. Haha, <laughs> it's okay. Shh. It's all a bit of fun, Halloween, isn't it? I think there there are some churches that don't like it and they think it's terrible and all all that business. Um, but you know, it it is only a bit of fun, isn't it, Halloween? I'm sure it is. It is. Will you be dressing up this year? Uh, no, probably not. I mean, I don't need a mask to be at Halloween, do I? Let's face it, boys and girls. I don't need a mask anymore. <coughs> OK, this is about five minutes worth or more, so I'll let you get your next email. It's so fun to write to each week or call in. Ta-ta, till next time from Marge in Oklahoma. I love your emails, Marge. I quite like reading out emails. I love talking to people as well on here. It's all part of the fun, all joining in together. Hello to James, who writes, Hi Chris, I heard Cyber John's rant about the shops and their wording, and it made me think of something else that I hate about shops and all their unnecessary packaging they have on their products. Oh my God, let me tell you, <coughs> the box <coughs> from Amazon that my metal bowls came in was four times the size of the metal bowls. You've never seen anything like it. Absolutely ridiculous. Why on earth you would put such things in in a huge box like that? It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, and James says, and I thought this country was supposed to be growing green. Also, you were talking about driving. What is easier, driving at night or in the daytime? Sometimes I find driving at night easier, as there's less traffic on the roads. I hope that Katie the cat is okay from James. Katie is very well, thank you, James. She's asleep downstairs on the city. Driving at night is far, far easier, much better. No traffic on the road. You haven't got to worry about people banging into her anywhere. I, I find driving, driving at night is much, much easier. Thank you, yeah. Um, good morning to Fagash Lil, who says, Thanks, love. Took a while, with just one hand, not used to typing. So slow. Hope your voice gets better soon, Tar, for the show. Oh, good morning, Fagash Lil. Yeah, my voice is much better than it was last week, Lil. All right, my darling. Um, and uh, let's have a look. Finally today. Yeah, finally today, an email from Craig. 
who loves Daleks and all things Doctor Who. And Craig writes, Hello Chris, Craig A here. I'm with you today for your show. I've recently purchased a few Doctor Who DVDs. A collector's box set regeneration is worth getting if you can get it cheaply. It features stories on DVD regarding each Doctor's regeneration from William Hartnell's to David Tennant's last story. And there's a lovely book with DVDs in slots uh, in each page. I've also purchased the Ice Warriors on DVD from the second Doctor. Yes, I remember the Ice Warriors. The day of the Doctor's 50th episode, tickets for cinemas were released yesterday when this gets shown worldwide on November the 23rd. Yes, um, so on, on November the 23rd, on the television at home, is Doctor Who's 50th anniversary show. At the same time, it has been showing on, in cinemas all over the world in 3D, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, I work on Saturdays. So I'm not going to be able to see it at the cinema. Craig, do you know, apart from the live showing in the cinemas, are they going to show it during the week afterwards as a sort of like going to the film type thing? Do you know if that's going to happen? Because I'd, I'd like to know that, please. The weather's not been too bad here in the East Midlands so far. No, well, the wind is coming tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, be warned. There have been some changes at Castle Mead Radio, the hospital radio station, this month. A revamped studio and our station manager has now got an office, which he's never had. Plus, our listener figures are increasing slightly. Anyway, have another good uh, day. Thank you. And uh, nice to hear from you, Craig. All right. Always a pleasure to hear from you, sir. As indeed it is everyone else, boys and girls. Uh, Marge is off now. She's going to watch the rest of the show later. Have a great th weekend. Thank you, Marge. And I'm off now as well, boys and girls. That's it for the show today. Uh, thank you very much. Don't forget, to, you can watch the show live uh, next Saturday. We will be with you live at 12 o'clock GMT, OK? 12 o'clock UK time, which may be, if you're in another country, it might be a different time for you next week because we are about to have our clocks moved back tomorrow. So remember that, OK? Next week we are with you at 12 o'clock GMT. Be lovely to hear from you on the telephone. My email address is Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk see you soon thanks for watching this bye bye